This is the human heart. Central to our physical body, our survival, revered by poets throughout history as the emotional center of our being. The place we instinctively touch when asked to point to ourselves. And now, what we have known intuitively is being understood scientifically. Researchers are unlocking a new science of the heart that could change everything we know about health and our interconnected nature. Coherence is a state of balance between heart, mind, and emotions, creating a favorable cascade of neural, hormonal, and biochemical events that benefit the entire body. But this phenomenon not only benefits us personally, it affects everything around us, emitting an electromagnetic field that can be measured up to three feet outside of the body. When you are in coherence, your heart resonates at the same frequency as the Earth's magnetic field. This frequency positively affects everything around you. When a group of people are in coherence together, this effect is magnified. Could communities synchronized in coherence lower violence, accelerate cooperation, and global harmony? This is the purpose of the Global Coherence Pulse. If we can measure the impact of thousands of people in coherence at the same time, it could lead to a breakthrough in understanding the full potential of the human heart. All you need to participate is your presence and your heart. To take it to the next level, join the research study by downloading the app and getting an HRV monitor to measure your personal coherence. The world needs it more than ever before. Each human heart is unique and magnificent by itself. But imagine what could be possible when we unify. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Global Coherence Pulse for day five, collaboration. This is going to be a really fun one because we're going to collaborate together in offering this pulse today. Also, um, blessings on this incredible solstice. And I just want to acknowledge over the last couple of days, as we've been doing our meditations together and pulsing together, I've been feeling almost this immediate saturation of the potency of our shared field. I don't know if it's the this human resonance that's been happening that has created this sense of amplification or whether it's actually the potency of our shared presence really beginning to experience itself. And I had that yesterday with uh, Julie guiding us in our meditation about unity. I felt the field experiencing itself as unique and yet a unified um, presence. I could feel the field feeling itself. So I think, I think we are. I think we're creating a potency on the planet right now with World Unity Week, with uh, our collective um, opening up of these vibrations, these energies that we've been uh, exploring every week and the quality of the heart that you're bringing to these um, pulses. It really makes a difference. So I'm going to jump right in today. If you have the app, download the app. It's really fun to use the camera sensor. And you can kind of, you know, look at your coherence. Uh, we've been doing that, and it's really fun. I've actually gotten better readings than ever on these pulses. So <laughs> that's a good thing. We're doing something. And I'm going to start today. We have Gary Malkin, and we have Julie Kroll. 
And the three of us have done a lot of collaborating together. Like we collaborated on the seven days of rest and sacred renewal. We've collaborated on the fireside chats with the cultivating coherence and community. We've been collaborating on podcasts and we've really done a good job of learning what it means to collaborate for the joy of the self and for the good of the whole. And so I just thought that we would have an adventure today where the three of us are going to weave our energies and we're going to start with Gary offering us an attunement to get mm. our energies centered and then mm. we'll continue our play. <clears throat> what, a, what a thrill, what an honor. It's been a while. Um, and I'm so thrilled to be, have been invited to play a role today. When I was thinking about collaboration, I was thinking about the fact that there's a, such an important pretext for collaboration. Um, and it's one of the steps of the four-step process that Hope Fitzgerald and I talked about in our presentation on Monday morning. Uh, it's part of the World Unity Week. Uh, we have a workshop called You Awake, Mastering the Art of Change. And the second step of the four-step process is a, a, a new relationship with forgiveness rather than forgiving someone from a higher, lower place to a forgive, forgiving, forgiveness. It's not, it's about equanimity, equanimity. Equanim so I wanted to share this track that I had the great honor and pleasure to collaborate with, with Sarah McCrum. And what a, what a way to collaborate with Sarah, because we go into the studio, and many of you have probably seen these audio or video transformances, where we truly just surrender and jump off the cliff without a net and see what happens. And remarkably, what happens is something that we're both astonished by. And this piece you're about to hear, they're, meant, they're called transformances because they're meant to induce a trance. They're meant to support transformation. They're transmissions. So in the way that we understand now that listening is a cymatic experiment of letting our fluids and our, and our organs and our being, our body, our tissues, actually shape into sacred geometry the way the cymatic experiences show with sand or water, that we gradually allow ourselves to come into coherence vibrationally. So when you listen, it, it, like as if we're around the fire that we've talked about before, the listening fire, allow the spaciousness that music and these transmissions allow and start to feel what the pretext for collaboration is. Because how can we show up to collaborate if we haven't had enough self-love, self-acceptance, and self-forgiveness in order to be clean in our collaborations with ourselves and with others. So with further without further ado. Hey Gary. Yes. Hey Gary, before we before we do that, yeah. I started us off wrong. I said it was collaboration, but it's really cooperation. But they're really the same thing to me, this collaboration and cooperation, because one requires the other. So I'm just gonna like make sure we've got the theme for today is cooperation. Wow. And we'll demonstrate that through our collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they right, are they go. are they are siblings, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, I, and it doesn't change it doesn't change a thing to what I just said, right? Not a thing. The pretext for cooperation is how we show up as cooperators is that if we're just such a difference, if I'm carrying blame, shame, and, and self-judgment, and I'm not complete, there's a, safe, there's a geometric pattern to that, and it's not pretty. <laughs> and so I just want to read that uh, shades of perfectly imperfect, constantly open to the new, right? So there's nothing like listening and music and spoken word to actually allow ourselves to be in the Petri dish, being shaped into forgiveness that will enable us to cooperate and collaborate. And I just have to say special shout out to my beloved friend, Julie, who I haven't seen in so long. And I'm so happy to see See you, honey. Anyway, all right, here we all go. Right, let's let's just take a breath, take a deep breath in, and listen with every cell of your being. Here we go. Not, no, that's not it. That's the Appalachian Sunrise that you used for the opening. It's called Forgiveness, and it's a three-minute transformance. 
Hope you have it. A video. It's not a video. It's an audio. No? Okay. I, we have a video of it, but I love what happens when we close our eyes and we feel it cleanses our mitochondria when we listen rather than look. It's my belief. I'm biased. <laughs> I love that. Do you have the track? Is it there? We can playing so what's labeled forgiveness. Room. Pardon me? He's playing what's labeled forgiveness. Can I share the track and play it right here from here? No. Go ahead. Yes. Huh? He's saying you can. I can? Yes. Awesome. Flexibility. Yes. Pivot. Yay. Love it. Here we go. About to share. Hold on. Hold the track on. Forgiveness. He's trying to share his oh, screen. Shares. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's coming. Okay, let's take a breath. Ah, audio transformances. Here we go. I'm sharing now. Let's take a breath. Let's forgive each other and forgive ourselves. each other and love ourselves. Let's make peace with each other and make peace with ourselves.
<sighs> Those transformances are such beautiful gifts that you guys did. I think they're really gifts to the planet. Thank you so much. That was really beautiful. And I think forgiveness is a nice place to start when we talk about cooperation. We can keep all three of us up. We're going to have a little bit of a dialogue. That would be great. Thank you. So Julie and Gary, you know, as I said, we we have been playing together. So we've been learning what actually is required of that. And I know I'm going to be really transparent and say, I think one of the reasons why our cooperation, our collaboration has worked so well is that we've been willing to be really honest with each other. And and we've we've said things to each other that needed to be said in order for us to move past our traumas or to move past our places that we're holding on. And we've been able to invite each other in ways that are um, based on that forgiveness, right? Forgiving ourselves and and each other and um, empowering and uplifting each other to actually show up the way we know that we want to do and to give the gifts and to do the part that we know is ours to do. And I think that's really been such an important part. And and it kind of came up in my heart in our in this thing of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to say thank you. I want to say, you know, cooperating together and collaborating together um, in a way that really uplifts us requires that we really show up for each other honestly and um, and humbly, vulnerably, and powerfully. So. Mm-hmm. Julie, I wonder if you might have something you want to add to that. And we'll just have a few minutes where we can dialogue. And then we're going to guide a collective meditation together. We're just going to um, see what happens when we um, cooperate and <laughs> join our energies uh, spontaneously together uh, on, on all, all of our behalf. Yeah, you know, I want to say so much about cooperation, but I'm just going to presence this because Gary must have been tuning into the field and me today, where I woke up this morning and uh, I'm just going to share this for the global reason, but then I really do want to dig into cooperation, but the forgiveness piece, where um, a cousin of mine posted our great, great grandparents story that's put in this bronze statue in this little tiny museum that is in the town that I live in from the late 1800s. And the statue tells all about them immigrating over here from Norway and how they met and how they homesteaded and pioneered. But at the end of this, it says, um, and tall grasses, this might be offensive to those listening and know this is coming from the deep need for forgiveness. It said at the bottom of this large five foot tall bronze sign and tall grasses and Indians and Buffalo were replaced by homesteading and families and Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Buffalo were replaced by farm animals. And it just, I've been crying all day today I've been in this place of deep, deep grief Mm. and the need for forgiveness. And as I woke to that, that just startled me. Like they were celebrating this land office and the sign and it was put on social media. And I realized that at least 12 of my 16 great, great grandparents, the sets, of great, great grandparents, at least 12 pioneered and homesteaded and displaced the indigenous Pawnee nation that was here. And so like I've spent my day with consultation of, of indigenous, of really doing some clearing, some forgiveness and some ceremony around it on behalf of my family and my ancestors, and to just really clear that here. And um, thinking about that more globally with cooperation and culture and where we're at, I mean, this is big, like literally all of us probably come from that same 
mm -hmm. that same lineage, that same ancestry, wherever we settled, right? So as I, I think about this beautiful land and, and the all grasses and the Indians and the buffaloes that were displaced, um, I offer my own such a deep apology. I feel it in every cell of my being. And um, yeah, I was just, I've been so tearful all day today. But I, I, I want to presence that with cooperation because this is the day for cooperation. And Elizabeth Satoris, our beautiful evolution biologist um, friend, says we are a cooperative species. We were born a cooperative species and um, one of the few mammals that really understand how to cooperate. There's only two, according to Elizabeth, that they've they've figured that out, besides insects and others that become superorganisms. But um, her words, I think, are really important this World Unity Week when she um, she really encourages us to build caring communities. And I've twisted that with her permission and and share it as that this time right now and you're right Teresa the astrology is perfect for our new story our new humanity rising and and this field right here today today is perfect for us to really hear this voice that it's time for us to build cooperative communities that care for all life and future generations and that is our story. And that is our, our literally more than our DNA. It's the entelechy of the species as humans that we are so much more than what we've believed that we have been and how we've demonstrated it. We are so much more than that. And we are evolving from late adolescence, feisty, feisty, competitive adolescence as a species. We're evolving into our early adulthood, and we know how to do this. And it is time to build cooperative communities that care for all life and future generations. And it starts here. Like, I'm making a declaration on World Unity Week, part of, of my 99-day mission with the help of... Um, Hereditary Chief Filling Jr. and others, I will create ceremony and forgiveness and and really look at what do I need to do to cooperate with those that were displaced from right here where I live, like right here on this beautiful Pawnee land. Wow. Oh, God, I just remember what it's felt like to be in the beautiful plush leather seats of being with Teresa and Julie. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I want to comment something about the honesty comment, the transparency that we've had together. I remember there was one thing that the two of you, it was kind of like a mini intervention in a way, where you held space for the best version of myself. You knew what my intention was, and there was a blind spot in my not seeing the impact my undigested parts of me were having on you and others. And uh, I remember something I blurted out in one of the uh, events, World Unity Week last year. And I just, I want to thank you for you knowing who I really am and what I really wanted. Because it's really been a guiding North Star for me to deepen my capacity to feel into this in a way, metaphorically, what you're talking about, Julie, in the same way that the body keeps the score and doesn't lie, right? Where all those things come home to roost and, and gr unattended grief, unattended loss, unattended trauma doesn't go away. It has to be digested and addressed, right? So this was something you gave me, and I'm at a different place in part because of your honesty and your trust in who I really am, right? And it's a constantly evolving process of being a stand for each, each other's best selves, which yields to more flow and collaboration and cooperation, right? But then, Julie, when you shared that, I suddenly had this, you know, I'm, you know I'm kind of fascinated with the metaphor of cymatics. And on a vibrational level in the holo movement, the scar of that 
lack of cooperation between the pioneers and the indigenous people of our land. It's not going to go away by just wishing it away. And so there it is. And so by facing it, like Desmond Tutu says, opening the wound and giving it air and sunshine and bring and revealing it, right? I just was sensing that that is also a tear in the field, in the body. The body knows the score. The body of the field has the imprint of this action that the pioneers had that we don't even understand. And I want to just say also that, that recently I saw 1883, the, the kind of the origin story of the Yellowstone uh, television on Paramount+. Plus. Taylor Sheridan is my most favorite filmmaker of all time right now because he, the honesty in his filmmaking and his knowing that it doesn't lie, the field doesn't lie, he rewrote the impression of what the, the Native Americans and the pioneers were dealing with in a way that we've never seen before. And of course there's Hollywood, but at a level we've never seen before, he reveals the tear in the field and the tear in our capacity to devise and experience and embody new levels of collaboration with our indigenous elders and partners and uh, the, the inherited, the, you know, the ones to whom we have so much indebtedness towards. So I'm so glad you brought up that story because it just made me realize as above, so below, and on the mo on the micro mitochondria level, to the field of the impact that our forebears have approached this uh, co-opting of the land. There's so much beauty to open ourselves to that will enable us to feel true collaboration and cooperation. And um, I'm interesting how it's interesting how spontaneous we've been here just in this around cooperation and the key things that have come up. One, Gary, you deciding that forgiveness was a good start mm. and how that was perfectly aligned because really in order for us to cooperate with each other in ways that are unprecedented going forward, right? You know, we've, we've, we've really been challenged around that in so many ways. One, it does require us to forgive ourselves and each other for all the ways that we've acted in the past that has inhibited our ability to cooperate and collaborate. There's, there's no other way through. Otherwise, we're always going to come up with those places that that we then hold tight to or that we resist against. And, and so we have to be humble enough to say, I'm sorry first. And we have to be willing to actually listen deeply to each other. So when we come into those moments where we're challenged, like you said, Gary, about what Julie and I did for you, is that we knew you in our heart mm -hmm. and we knew that what you were attempting and so in that moment, instead of pushing away or projecting out or blaming or complaining or shaming, we actually just stood in our own commitment to the quality of our presence. And we invited you to step up into what you were saying you wanted the quality of your presence to be. And so I think there is that. It's like the forgiveness of ourselves and each other because Boy, we we brought ourselves to a place on this planet where it is a mess. We're on the verge of extinction. It is a it is a global crisis of unprecedented proportions, and it seems that's how life works, right? It gives us this opportunity to play out wide, and then we all of a sudden realize that the way we've been playing is actually not going to take us over the threshold. And we can't just stand around the wreck and waste all of our time wishing it was different than it is. Mm. We need to allow for the awareness of a new truth to guide our hands and our hearts with each other and show up and say, okay, going forward, I'm going to be the best I can be on behalf of the whole. And I'm going to come together and I'm going to listen to how I can play more fully with the people and the things around me as opposed to coming with our ideas held fast to how we think it should be. And so it really requires a huge letting go and a huge presencing. 
that truth piece is really important, Teresa. You know, as I, I shared that story with my husband this morning when I'm crying, he's like, what's the matter? You know, and he wanted to say, well, we don't know the pioneer story. And, and I had to say, oh, our government came in and did this. And then, and then he was like, oh, yeah. You know, and we had ceremony, the caravan of unity that came through Nebraska. We literally had the Pawnee here and in, in uh, it was a beautiful part of our healing in the Caravan of Unity in 2020. So there, it is a, a truth piece. And listening to you, Teresa, the, um, Elizabeth Satoris just said this to me uh, about a month ago when she was on my show. She said, it's really simple. There's this really simple recipe for us with this cooperation thing, right? This becoming cooperative young adults. It's really simple. We only have two things. And I love this have peace within, here we are, coherence, right? Have peace, practice internal peace and generosity because it's all about the good of the whole. So when we practice our peace and we're generous, we're caring about everybody and everything. We're caring about the land. We're caring about creation. We're caring about each other and community and our families. And she's just that simple. Practice inner peace and be generous. I love this, that. Is, this is one of the reasons that Hope and I have developed this program called You Awake, Mastering the Art of Change. One of the most exciting slides that Hope came up with happened to me when I was leading a retreat, uh, or I was playing the music director role at uh, the Ancient Secrets retreat last week in Sedona. And I got triggered moments in a way that I hadn't been triggered in years by the founder of the event who's very close to me. And I had to pivot in that moment to presenting. And I was so triggered that I wanted to just leave. I would never get that bad, but it was really bad. <laughs> I was very triggered. I found a part of me that was wanting his acknowledgement more than I knew that I needed it. And it, by not being acknowledged when everybody else was acknowledged, I got completely triggered. I didn't realize I was looking for him to be my dad in a way that was inappropriate, right? And what the slide that we came up with that was so poignant was I forgot that the difference when being with a wound or a loss or a trauma, it's so easy to go into a vicious cycle and lose sight of the fact that the only way out is through by facing the feeling and feeling the tears and noticing the grief and allowing yourself to feel it. And that's by not doing that, it propels this vicious cycle which prevents the upward spiral, which is the alternative, right? And that's where the culture has been in combativeness and divisiveness and the lack of being in what Francis Weller talks about, around the community ritual of grief, as a way to give way to this co cooperation that's waiting for us. Teresa, the way you just expressed that, I'm just, I'm going to have to listen to the recording again because it was <laughs> such a beautiful, both of you, it's just such a beautiful, these, these are the pretexts for the new tools of cooperation that are required now and that yeah. are asking us at a level to feel the difficult feelings and sit in the fire of that. And once I did that and my friend said, well, maybe you should just feel the tears first, the ouch mm -hmm. first. And all he, that's all he had to say. And I sobbed and suddenly realized that I had found a projection that I didn't know I was, that, it, that had been running me. It then it then like a like the invasion of the body snatchers. <laughs> it was controlling me, you know. And I released it and I was fine, you know. So it's yeah. hard work, but it's the work that's now. It's the work yeah. that's now. Well, let's um let's take this this um feeling tone that we've generated with our authentic sharing this morning. Really, I so appreciate that about the two of you and our relationship and our uh, willingness to just really show up authentically like this. And let's um, let's let's turn on the music and let's just drop in and actually, kind of Gary, we can have you start and we'll each just presence this feeling of letting go and forgiveness and opening up to actually saying from now forward. I'm going to choose to be my best and show up that way in relationship to all the ways I'm being asked to cooperate mm. with others and with life 
of life. So let's start. Let's do a little meditation together. Maybe we all can close our eyes, feel the bottom of our feet, and place our awareness in our hearts. Start to notice who's listening. The music's a little loud for me, but I trust you're taking care of that. Who's listening? And what are the fruits of the practice of being here now in presence not just in ourselves but in the recognition of the one unified heart that we are now so let the music have its way with you the music can be a little louder, a little, have the music have its, let beauty have its way with you. And notice all the separate perceptions coming home to this moment. So all of us is here to cooperate with the now. Let the music be like a warm, comfortable shawl for all the nerve endings that believed you were separate, that believed that you have to defend yourself, that believed that life isn't happening for you. that believes that life's happening to you. It's come home to the remembrance. It's all happening for us so that we can show up together, together, together. Pass the baton. Keep the music going. Yeah. As we are wrapped in that, 
Noda. Harmony. Together, offers of me. And this beautiful track of music. It's melting. It's unity and diversity. It's designed into who we be. to inner space. I'm just aware of all of those different selves that are cooperating for the common good, for the good of the whole. We rest in the awareness of that cooperation. We rest in the awareness of that harmony and inner peace. And we trust this designing intelligence. that brings us into new levels of cooperating as we leap forward and build this new humanity that is rising in our bones. That can test all to to do is follow that joy. This new humanity is built on cooperation. Begins with this field of coherence. Hearts beating as one heart. Spirit of cooperation. All our voices come together and sound beautiful music with that I pass to Teresa's voice.
with our hands on our hearts. In this field of love and care and compassion and forgiveness. We take a deep breath and we release anything that holds us back from showing up with our full <laughs> gifts. <laughs> We just let any distraction not pull us out of our center. And we make an inner claim to show up with our best. With our friends and our families. with our communities and with those that are clustering around us, calling us into greater cooperation and collaboration. And we pulse this commitment out into the field because the field hears everything. The field receives everything. Let it receive your commitment to do your best, to forgive and be forgiven, and to show up and do everything that you can to ensure that everyone can live in harmony and in peace. And so it is. Thank you, everyone, for being with us on the Global Coherence Pulse today for this very potent, I think, pulse. I really appreciate the depth of presence that we all shared and experienced here today. And we wanna invite you to join us in the connection field where you will find Gary Malkin and you will find Julie Kroll and you will find the things that I'm doing and so many other organizations. And I would say the connection field, which we'll put in the chat. Um, the connection field is a place where we're learning what it takes to cooperate and to collaborate on behalf of the whole. And it's a community space already. Just in the last couple of days, we opened it up. This is our 99 day mission, Julie and Tammy with Unify. Gary's involved, so many different people. This is a playground for us to really explore what it takes for radical collaboration and purpose-inspired action. So join us, we'll put that link in the chat. And uh, I wanna bring Julie and Gary back on and perhaps, um, Gary, I know you had one thing you wanted to share and maybe you could put a link in the chat for that. And then just a few closing words and then we're gonna go to a global silent minute. Dot Maver will be joining us and guiding us in um, connecting as a community across the globe, so. nothing to share because we're at the time but we were going to play a track that we won't have time for so i just want to acknowledge that when we create room like this it's good to put something in its place that actually has a higher vibration that entrains all the parts of us that are now wondering what to do now that they want to go back to the old way of being and we were going to play a track called the science of love it's available on my thrive to soundtrack on my website if you want to go to wispotheworld.com and check out foster's wonderful phrase the science of love foster gamble but the, the principle but the principle is important and bear is mentioning in 30 seconds that when we clear like this we must 
go out in nature and imprint us with something that will replace us with a vibration. We all want to be doing, you know, in that vibration and sort of replace it with a energy that is elevating us to the next level is a very important next step. And, Let's uh, do this, Gary. Let's, after we do the Global Silent Minute, which will end right on time, then let's close out because we have a few minutes leeway and let's play the science of love to send us out after the Global Silent Minute. So fantastic. Don't worry about that. Wonderful. Wonderful. I also put some links in the chat for the frequency meditations that are happening every day, David Gershon. And I put a link to the recording. So if you haven't had a chance to um, connect with those, please do. They're really beautiful. And they're opening the door for 99 Days the Game, which we're going to be hosting in the connection field. Right. And there's also a link there for you to register. <laughs> Julie, any just closing thoughts before we go to our Global Silent Minute and then come out with our celebration of the science of love? Yeah, I do have one important thing to say very simply. Let's begin to tell a new story. We are a cooperative species. We know how to cooperate. And all the stories that say we don't are old and they came in separation consciousness. So let's start today with a new narrative that that is underpinned and framed by our unitive nature and the that says we are a cooperative species. We know what we're doing here. We can do this. And it takes a lot of times tragedy to bring out the best in us when we go and and we know how to rush in after a hurricane or a tornado or a, a pandemic. But we are a cooperative species. So mm, beautifully said. And Gary, I saw you put a link in the chat to the new um, uh, workshop or course that you and Hope are doing. So uh, if you want to say something about that, and then we'll um, we'll go to our Global Silent Minute. And well, any closing words from you? Yeah, thank you. I, I just want to say how wonderful it is to be in a collaborative space with the two of you. I feel so empowered. You know that kinesthetic thing when you somebody feels your muscle and when I'm around the two of you, I just I'm I'm here. I'm strong. I'm present. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And yeah, the, the QR code is a, a link to the workshop we're doing in August. And really we're all working for the same boss. The purpose of the workshop is the four-step process to actually cooperate as who we are, authentic selves. So we're all we're all doing everything that we know we each can do. And that's what I love about being with you and with this World Unity Week community that Ben and John and Arena and Becky and everybody have created. It's such a wonderful playground for us to do our purpose together. So blessings. And I'm so excited we will play the track after the Global Silent Minute. That's wonderful. Yeah, great. So let's do that. Um, I just want to thank our team on the back end that's been helping with World Unity Week. It's a big deal. I mean, they have got stuff stacked on top of each other. They've got everybody's kind of run of show going and um, they've been doing a fantastic job. And even when it doesn't go quite right, it just goes perfectly because that's what it takes, right? To cooperate together and we go with the flow and we respond and not react when something doesn't go exactly the way we want it to. And what comes on the other side of it is just grace. It's just grace. And then everybody can feel good about their contributions instead of feeling like, darn, I didn't do a good job or something. We just don't need that anymore. Well, and we you are know, and, learning. And Teresa, you know, even this, we couldn't hear the words over the music sometimes, at least I couldn't. And I just want to celebrate that when it's not going the way we want, it's kind of like when you lose your mind and you forget what you're going to say next. My friend Kim Rosen, the one that we're saved by a poem, the moment she forgets what she's about to say, she's trained herself to just go like, ah, and just <laughs> fall into the feather bed of not knowing, right? <laughs> so even when it doesn't work as we expected it to, what an invitation to cooperate yeah. with what is, you know? All right. Yeah. So let's Thanks, go to the global. Thank you, Hope Cast. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Thank Hope, you Cast. Hope Cast. We appreciate all that you're doing. We love you. Thank you. And let's go to the Global Silent Minute. It is a joy to offer this daily Global Silent Minute in our community field of heart coherence, where we are in resonance with life itself as we presence in the joy and recognition of the one heart. 
as our hearts unite across distance, both sides of the veil, as we listen deeply to what is emerging and demanding new expression through us for the good of the whole. We give ourselves to this new era of loving right relationship, creating an active healing field that radiates outwards and pulses the planet and beyond with the potency of our collective love and care from the one heart for all of life. Daily, we will observe the exact same 9 p.m. GMT minute of silence as action in sacred unity with millions both sides of the veil calling for global cooperation, peace, and freedom. Knowing that the original Big Ben Silent Minute helped to end World War II, today we use our Global Silent Minute to draw forth true peace and spiritual power from the infinite reservoirs of silence. This is to bring an end to all war, to bring peace to all humankind. The power of silence is greater than we know. It is in silence that we experience unity. Silence as action in sacred unity. So let us prepare to enter a global silent minute. With a deep breath, we activate the spirit of peace in our own hearts. and we unite our fiery hearts across distance. Now we invite all those on the other side of the veil to join us. The next thing you will hear is a Tibetan singing bowl as we radiate and pulse our heart love through silence as action in sacred unity. May the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Om Shanti. Thank you, Dot. So good. I just miss her so much. I love that she's with us every single day in the way she is. So we just have a few minutes. We could go over just a tiny bit, and, and Gary, let's play the science of love as a way to fill in those spaces. You want to say something, and then we'll go. Very, very brief. Just I've had this phrase that came to me as a way to prepare for listening to this, is that we can feel this. We can do this. We can be this. Just think mm -hmm. that when you're listening to this. That's what Foster and Kimberly did at the end of Thrive Two. Was we can do this. We can be this. That's I added the other two. Listen to that with that in mind. All right. Thank you. Let's do. It. This is our going out for the day. Blessings, everybody. Take this good energy and pulse the field with it. And fill yourself up. 